The Tokyo police arrest a Yakuza leader for stealing Pokemon cards. An Indiana judge has ruled that tacos and burritos are actually sandwiches. And killer whales sink a yacht off Gibraltar. These are the weird stories on Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast. I'm your host, Jonesy. Thanks for spending some time with me. I have some strange, weird, funny news from around the world. Let's do it. The Tokyo police arrest Yakuza leader for stealing Pokemon cards. Is this the most Japanese thing you've ever heard in your life? Yakuza leader <laughs> stealing Pokemon cards. Japan's once mighty Yakuza. I guess they're not so mighty anymore. They were notorious figures in organized crime at one point, but they have fallen on some hard times. Clearly, they're stealing trading cards. Tokyo police recently arrested a very high-ranking member of the Takanagawa gang, part of the country's second-largest Yakuza syndicate. What was his crime? Stealing Pokemon cards. I mean, can you even believe this? Well, we, let's find out how many. Maybe it was billions and billions of dollars worth of Pokemon cards. I think these things are worth quite a bit still. Surprising to me, but... Okay, stealing Pokemon cards, this individual. In his defense, yeah, he's probably like, hey, boss, I gotta catch them all. I was just following orders, all right? You gotta catch all the Pokemon. Once you start, you can't stop. Now, if you don't know, Yakuza is the Japanese equivalent of gangsters or mafiosos. They were once a powerful force in organized crime. Their membership peaked in the 1960s at about 200,000. In 2013, U.S. regulators assisted Japan in cracking down on the Yakuza by targeting their finances, and they've dwindled. The numbers have dwindled. There's not too many, and here they are stealing trading cards. I wonder if there is, there's a, um, you think there's a trading cards crimes division in the Tokyo Police Department? <laughs> I'll bet you there's an anime crimes division for sure, so careful. Careful, boys and girls. Don't download any pirated anime series. The article says uh, this recent arrest shatters the media stereotype of the Yakuza as terrifying figures known for their full body tattoos and involvement in loan sharking, extortion, drug dealing and violence. Well, you know, hold the phone. I'm, I'm sure they're involved in all these and I'm pretty sure they still have tattoos. So, uh, but I, I'm wondering if they're recruiting children at this point. I mean, the, the whole Pokemon involvement makes me wonder if they're just bringing in some youngins. Okay, some more information uh, they have here. The Yakuza's leader is 39-year-old Keita Sato. He stole items worth 250,000 yen, which is about $1,300, including 25 Pokemon trading cards. Um, they're attributing the rise in trading card thefts in Japan to several factors, including portability, ease of resale for cash, and difficulty tracking these sorts of stolen goods. It says here, in recent years, the Yakuza have undergone a significant shift, moving away from the violent crimes that they're known for and increasingly turning towards white-collar offenses. This also aligns with a decline in gang membership and overall brutality over the past few decades, uh, they're reporting. Anti-gang laws have crippled the financial viability of the Yakuza. These laws target businesses that associate with gangs and restrict gang members' access to various financial services such as credit cards and pensions, making gang membership these days a less profitable endeavor. Says here, COVID-19 pandemic further strained the Yakuza's finances. Lockdowns and social distancing measures reduced demand for illegal activities such as sex work, gambling, drug trafficking, a key source of income for the Yakuza. Yakuza membership has lost its luster for young generations as well. According to someone named Suzuki, who's a renowned Yakuza expert, in an interview with the media, Suzuki said, They have to sacrifice a lot to lead the life of a gangster, but for increasingly diminishing returns, it seems. Well, look at that. We're learning so much about the Yakuza. Since uh, their average age is, is exceeding 50, and a growing number of them are pushing their, into their 70s here. Wow. It makes the whole Pokemon heist even more strange. <laughs> I picture a bunch of 70-year-old Yaku Yakuza just having an argument about these... <laughs> These Pokemon cards. You mean to tell me a single card is worth $200? How? Trust me, trust me, my grandson loves these things. We need to go catch them. We need to go catch them all. 
An Indiana judge has just ruled that tacos and burritos are actually sandwiches. That makes sense because whenever I think of who should be an authority on Mexican food, I think a guy in Indiana. Who else? A judge in Indiana should decide tacos and burritos are sandwiches. Probably is going to tell us that pizza is toast as well. Is lasagna cake? Oh, I can't wait for the ruling. Fort Wayne, Indiana, a judge in Fort Wayne, Indiana, has just ruled that tacos and burritos are sandwiches. How, bro? How are they sandwiches? They're not even close. A torta is a sandwich. Do you not know that a torta exists? A torta is a sandwich. A taco and a burrito are not a sandwich. Um, There's something behind this. Maybe he was bribed by Quiznos. I don't know. Is Quiznos out of business, though? (laughs) Maybe he was bribed by Taco Bell. All right, apparently this all comes down to some sort of restaurant zoning situation. Uh, I, I read the paragraph, and it's hard to understand. There's a commercial developer named Martin Quintana who's trying to do a, a zoning change for a strip mall within which is a restaurant. Had to get the neighbor's approval. There's some sort of condominium next door. Now, we also have here the famous Taco Mexican Grill. You guys know the one east of Glenbrook Square Mall in Fort Wayne. The famous, famous Taco Mexican Grill. (laughs) They wanted to expand into the strip mall, apparently. Quintana made plans for the famous taco, you know, the famous one, the famous Taco Mexican Grill, (laughs) Glenbrook Square Mall. You guys know the famous one, right? We've all been there. Where the tacos surprisingly appear to be sandwiches. They serve them with a pickle on the side and chips. They made plans for the famous taco to open in the Quintana Plaza strip mall. The neighbors cried foul. They didn't want this. I guess they didn't want the famous taco Mexican grill to move in next door. I I don't know why you wouldn't want to live next to the famous taco Mexican grill. What's wrong with these residents? I would want to live right next to it. I'd be eating there every day. I'd be I would I would eat a burrito sandwich all the time. Okay, here's the contention. Apparently. The wording of. The approved amendment to the restaurant was such a sandwich bar style restaurant whose primary business is to sell made to order or subway style sandwiches, which by way of example includes but is not limited to Subway or Jimmy John's, but expressly excludes traditional fast food restaurants like Arby's, Wendy's and McDonald's, provided that any such restaurant shall not have outdoor seating or drive through service. For the avoidance of doubt, the sale of alcoholic beverages is, is expressly prohibited upon the real estate as well. And now we have the judge that ruled on Monday that the famous Taco Mexican Grill, you guys know the one, the, the one that's at the Glenbrook Square Mall in Fort Wayne, the one that serves those awesome taco sandwiches, the BLTs, the judge Craig Bobe ruled that this restaurant would be permittable and the commitments don't need to be amended. So basically what he's saying is this famous taco restaurant can be inserted into the area where a sandwich bar style restaurant has been approved as a primary business. We also have the uh, owner of the strip mall, Quintana, saying that tacos and burritos are Mexican sandwiches. And then in the ruling, the judge actually writes in the ruling, the court agrees with Quintana that tacos and burritos are Mexican style sandwiches. And the original written commitment does not restrict potential restaurants to only American cuisine style sandwiches. <laughs> My goodness, what next judge? Are you going to call salsa Mexican ketchup? I mean, what? where are we going to draw the line here? Strangely, the judge was very silent on hot dogs, which is still a mystery. Does any, can anyone... <laughs> And uh, another mystery is, are chicken nuggets boneless wings? Ooh, this is an ongoing debate as well. I don't agree with this. Tacos and burritos are Mexican sandwiches. I've already mentioned earlier in the segment, the torta. That's a sandwich. None of this other crap is sandwiches. The definition of a sandwich. Here we have it here. Food consisting of two pieces of bread with meat, cheese, or other filling in between that can be utilized as a light meal (laughs) utilized as a light meal i love the phrasing of that but yeah i agree two pieces of bread are required this is the argument about the hot dog because it's a bun it's not a so is a hot dog a sandwich oh my goodness this this debate has been raging on for decades but no debate whether a taco is a sandwich no debate further whether a burrito is a sandwich this it's not even close a burrito is completely wrapped up it's enclosed 
You can't even see the ingredients of the burrito, which in, on all sandwich, that's a characteristic of every sandwich is you can see the ingredients. You can see what's in between usually. And, you know, the higher you stack them, the more you can see what's in there, which I like mine. I like mine stacked. I like the old club, the little club sandwich, although I take that middle piece of bread out because it's too much bread. I don't need the third piece of bread. I'll take that up. I do like the extra bacon and not too much mayo. I'm trying to cut down on the mayo. A burrito's a sandwich. Get out of here, judge. Maybe you guys agree or disagree. Call the show 646-450-2012. Make your case. Killer whales have attacked and sunk a yacht off Gibraltar. An unknown number of orcas have rammed a sailing yacht in Moroccan waters in the Strait of Gibraltar. Sunday morning this took place, causing the yacht to sink. This is the largest attack in a trend that has been terrifying sailors in the region for the past four years. Yes, in fact, I've covered many stories, not any sinkings of actual yachts or sailboats, but uh, the orcas have been very pesky. They've been biting off the rudders of various sailing ships. I covered that story already on Weird AF News. It seems like they're taking their game up another notch, completely sinking a yacht. And um, in this conflict, I'm, I'm probably pro team orca. I mean, <laughs> Operation Sink the Rich, eh, I can think of worse things. <laughs> Says here, this latest incident took place Sunday morning, 9 a.m., when crew members aboard the 50-foot-long Alberin Cognac called rescue services for help, claiming that their ship had been damaged by these apex predators about 14 miles from Cape Spartle at the southern entrance to the Strait of Gibraltar. A helicopter was quickly mobilized, and the oil tanker MT Lasco, which was sailing nearby, was also asked to provide from some assistance and rescue. The tanker eventually rescued the two individuals on board and transported them to Gibraltar. The yacht was left adrift and eventually sank. This sinking incident is the latest example of recurring orca rammings around the Gibraltar Strait and off the Atlantic coast of Portugal and northwestern Spain as well. Experts believe them to involve a subpopulation of about 15 individuals given the designation Gladys. Gladys, huh? So it's a little gang of orcas. They've narrowed it down. How do they know this? Oh, here's the answer to that. There's a research group called the Atlantic Orca Task Force. Uh, they track populations of the Iberian orca subspecies. According to them, there have been nearly 700 interactions since orca attacks on ships in the regions were first reported in May 2020. It is unclear, they say, why the orcas are targeting boats. Some experts believe they may be acts of revenge. Probably. Yeah, these probably, these orcas are probably like, stay in your lane, surface dweller. This is kind of the orca version of get off my lawn, right? You think they know that we're polluting and raising ocean temperatures and just ruining the environment? Maybe they know. They're pretty, you know, they're, they're whales, man, at the end of the day. These mammals are pretty intelligent. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they intercepted some of our emails or they're on social media reading what we're doing. <laughs> Marine biologist Alfredo Lopez Fernandez told Live Science that the lead whale, a female orca scientist, have called female orca scientists have called the lead whale white gladys the lead whale suffered a critical moment of agony which he believes was a collision with a boat or an entanglement with a fishing vessel that turned her more aggressive that's his theory and she's the leader of the group other theories included being a playful manifestation of the mammal's curiosity a social fad or the a social fad <laughs> yeah yeah it's a it's a tiktok challenge <laughs> a social fad <laughs> or the intentional targeting of what they perceive as competitors for their favorite prey, the local bluefin tuna. That could be. That makes sense to me. Bluefin tuna is highly targeted. It's very valuable. It's my favorite of all the tuna. It's delicious. I love it. I get it. One of my favorite sushi delights. Um, the article says, all but a handful of these interactions resulted in only minor injuries or damage. However, the attacks have grown more frequent, and a few have led to boats eventually sinking. Oh. The article gives this example. In August last year, Fep Felusaros, age 77. Fep Felusaros, what a cool name. I'm going to guess he's Greek. Fep Felusaros was sailing off the coast of Cape Vincent in Portugal, of course. His name is Fep Felusaros. He has to be sailing off the coast of Cape Vincent. When his boat was attacked by orcas, 
a whole team, a gang. The sailor who has 55 years of experience, 55 years, Fepfa Lucero's has been doing it. This guy knows how to sail. He wasn't ready for these orcas. This team attacked him for 30 minutes. They attacked his boat. They even followed the boat as it was towed to shore, he claims. He caught part of the attack on video as well. I hope he's okay, Fepfa Lucero's. He's probably not going to be out sailing around anytime soon. Poor guy's probably traumatized. You'll catch him at the local park doing you know piddling around with one of those little um electronic boats that you put in the in the little um the little man-made ponds the little boat races you know those ones well guys i think we should all get on our knees actually first walk to the ocean get on our knees and all hail the orca overlords welcome our orca overlords yay Hey everyone, thanks for spending some time with the Weird AF News podcast and your pal Jonesy today. I appreciate it. I want to give thanks to everyone who sent me emails, sent me articles the past couple days. I appreciate all of your participation. You guys can always email me at funnyjones at gmail.com. You can also call the show. It's 646 450 And follow me on the social media at Funny Jones on Instagram. Appreciate that. Um, if you want to support the show uh, because you just uh, inherited some something from a dead relative, or you maybe you found some buried treasure behind your boathouse, uh, you can go to weirdafnews.com. And on, on that website, you can buy me a coffee or you can uh, join the Patreon. So that's a good way to do it. Weirdafnews.com. Support the show. Anyways, I'm going to keep it really brief. Uh, good luck with your life, man. We'll see you tomorrow.